another day, another box of AliExpress bike parts inside here. Even cheaper, this is a 200 pound 12 speed group set. Today's video is an unboxing and first look at what you get when you order an L2 RX 2x12 from the 318 bike store on AliExpress. The answer is loads of bubble wrap bags, no official packaging, and um, even some bits of cardboard as well. I think there might be. Oh, there's a cassette in here. 318 Bike Store is one of the most popular stores on AliExpress. It is rated gold and has a medal. And it has 6,361 followers and 97.3% positive feedback. Let's start with a shifter. This is an L2 RX. L2 are actually the company who make the group set that was on my very, 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 very cheap bike from eBay. And uh, it's quite a popular brand from East Asia. This is their high-end group set. I think this is the highest end one they do. It is carbon and, well, it looks like this, which might look quite familiar. It looks a lot like Campag, really like Campag. Apparently, just like Sensor, L2 do respect patent laws, but clearly that doesn't mean they're not inspired by existing brands. Despite the branding itself, which actually looks more like Shimano's typeface, uh, the shape of these shifters looks very similar to Campag Nolo. These are fully cable operated brakes and gears. They feel fairly nice. They look fairly nice. The uh, material of the hoods looks quite well made and there's a little bit of a grippy pattern on it. In your hands they feel a little bit bigger than the sensor ones that I've experienced before. Gears are operated with a small paddle which is underneath the brake lever. Then you have a button to click down the other way. Then the outer lever operates your brake. They do package this pretty well. There's a lot of layers of protection. This bundle comes with Z-Race brake calipers, which are a different brand to L2. You'll find with a few sellers on AliExpress that they mix and match parts from different companies. These are a fairly well-known brand called Z-Race, and these are hydraulic calipers, but they're cable actuated, so like a hybrid system. The model of these is BR005. You can buy them separately, and they come, it's actually optional, with discs. They give you a host of different color options and size options. I went with black because it's neutral and 160 front and rear. Front mech, L2 branded, nice and shiny, feels premium. They say it's a carbon group set and the material used in the shifters looks like carbon. On here, they've tried to copy the color, but it's actually just alloy. But overall, a standard double front mech. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's actually an 11 printed on the back of the front mech, which indicates to me that's probably the same mech that they use on their 11 speed group sets, but it works fine with a 12 speed system as well. Rear mech, long cage. Again, carbony looking, spring feels good. I think the cage is actually carbon. Jockey wheels feel smooth. All your normal adjustments, high limit, low limit screw, cheat screw, a little bit of Loctite on them, which is nice to see. I actually think that's a nicer looking mech than the sensor one. I wonder what the maximum size cassette you can use is. Might be difficult finding out that information, but we will see. 34 tooth cassette uh, and some parts for the brakes. 1134 cassette, it was quite heavy, uh, as did the old one. But that is branded Z Race, although I thought for a second this was exactly the same as the cassette that came with the sensor group set, which is, I think is a Senex one, but no, there are some very slight differences in the machine. And this one's now covered in grease, and now so am I. 12 speed chain, also from Z Race. Last time I got a chain from AliExpress, didn't have any packing grease or lube on it whatsoever, which is very good for people who want to wax their chains. This one has got grease on. So if you were a chain waxing person, maybe avoid these chains. Doesn't say how many links someone has forgotten to tick the box on the box, but I'm sure it'll be enough for my gear ratios. So those are all the parts that come in the box. I haven't got a crank set this time because I've already got one on my bike and the bike that I'm gonna be using to test this stuff, well, it, there's no point in removing the crank and putting exactly the same one back on. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it. It is 12 speed compatible, so everything should just go on and be fine. Here we are at the weighing station of uh, Destiny, and we're gonna weigh the parts one by one. So you can do whatever you like with that information. 107. If you know, you know. 106. 255 grams for the chain. We'll probably take some links off that though. Front mech is 98 grams. Rear mech, 219. Right shifter, 209 grams. Left shifter, 212. Calipers are 323 grams. And then cassette, including the lock ring, 387 grams. Like I said, it's quite a heavy cassette. Sometimes I feel like I'd want to mix and match a lot of these parts. Like, 
the group set parts are brilliant, but the chains and cassettes that come with it, you know, there are better options out there for not that much more money. Bear that in mind, there's always options. Now, I've probably gone ahead and put fake campag in the thumbnail of this video, and it's actually a topic that I'd like to touch on. Is this really fake? Or is it just inspired by? Now Campagnolo were actually the first people to ever invent a front mech. And the design of these hasn't really changed that much at all. Is every company that makes a front mech copying Campag? The answer I think is yes, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Engineers and designers copy stuff all the time. And an analogy that I wanted to bring into this video is from the music world. Some of you guys who've been watching this channel a long time will know I like my guitar. I play a lot of guitar and I own a few different guitars. Now, this is a Fender Stratocaster, one of the most famous guitars in the world, still made and played to this day in exactly the same form as when it was first invented. Now, this is a Yamaha Pacifica, and this is a PRS Silver Sky. This is a Schecter, this is a Vintage, this is a Hona, this is a GNL, this is a Charvel, and as you can see, they all look pretty similar. And when I say pretty similar, I mean like they are almost exactly the same thing. The same can be said for Gibson guitars and their Les Paul model, and a host of other different guitar styles that were invented years ago. Now, of course, patent laws have come into it, whether it's bike parts we're talking about or musical instruments. If you're a company, a designer or an engineer, and you're looking to make a new product, you have to make sure you don't breach patent laws. So patents that have been bought by the original companies, the original designers, in order to protect their design work. Usually you'll find there's small changes that have been made to instruments or pieces of bike tech or whatever it may be. Small enough changes that they can still produce and sell the products. That's the situation we're in here. It might look like Campag on the outside, but there's probably some changes to the mechanisms inside. They've used a different typeface. They've respected the patent laws enough to not cause a problem. Everyone has their own opinion on whether this should be done or not, but I like to look at it through the eyes of a consumer. And as a consumer, Companies copying each other's designs and improving on them ends up being a better situation for me. Products on the whole have never been better. You can buy an absolutely fantastic guitar for 150 pounds now. You can buy a 12 speed carbon group set for 200 quid. You can get a pretty decent smartphone for cheaper than ever now. And it's all because designers and engineers copy off each other. One of the more interesting cases about stuff being copied in the bike world is actually the sensor group set which I have on my other bike. The guys who work there are actually ex-SRAM engineers. So they've obviously been inspired by their own work and they've kind of copied their work from themselves. But I guess they did it on company time. In any case, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. I'm gonna have a go and test this over the next few days. I'll do a build video. Uh, some of it will be easy to switch over because I've actually already got the cable routing done in my bike. I'll also be doing a quick update on the sensor group set because I have now ridden it across Europe. So, well, it's all still in one piece. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys soon.